So this whole thing started two years ago, almost to the date. It was May 2009. I put on my nice Nordstrom suit. I've got one of those colorful ties. And I started heading down to my uh, downtown office in Portland, where I worked for a major media corporation. It was a statewide office. I managed 40 people there. Um, I settled into my office, started reading some emails. I went to the weekly department head meetings. Maybe some of you have been to those kind of meetings before. It's Monday morning. Um, I go check some more emails. One of the emails that comes in is from my boss. She tells me that she wants to meet with me at 2 o'clock that afternoon. Nothing out of the ordinary. I go to lunch with a client, come back to the office, check some more emails, meet with some managers, and head into that 2 o'clock meeting. The conversation is very, very brief. The economy is changing. Advertising sales are down. My services are no longer needed. The HR manager gives me a cardboard box. This is a true story escorts me into my office, supervises me while I clean out my personal effects, put them into the box. And then after 25 years working for large traditional media companies, the HR manager escorts me out of the building. So a little bit of background. I graduated from one of those um, big name universities that a lot of you may have heard of. Um, I became a news reporter, did that for many years, had a great time doing that. Moved on to the business side of media, advertising sales manager. One of these guys who was thinking that maybe someday I would grab some kind of fancy corporate title, you know, VP of sales, something like that. Turns out it wasn't in the cards, and that's okay. So here I am, 47 years old, and I'm driving home to tell my wife and two teenage kids about what had just happened. Those were some pretty tough times, right? So I'm collecting unemployment for the first time ever. I'm uh, looking for a job, not finding much, many opportunities out there. There are a lot of guys like me out of work at the height of the recession, right? So what happens is, or I should also add, my wife had recently, she had to shut down her real estate business because of the economy. So things are kind of tough around our house, right? Got a couple kids getting ready to go to college. So what happens is... The, the, the main thing that happened next was, well, two things. First of all, I've got my wife, my kids, my neighbors, and my community standing right there with me, inspiring me every day. It made it a lot easier as I started to rebuild, both financially and uh, emotionally. So over the past two years, what I have gone through is a sort of personal and business transformation. And I've come to learn that sometimes in life, you can find inspiration where you least expect to find it. I found it at a mattress store. And that's not a punchline, I promise. So here's what happened. A few months after I lost my job, I'm talking to a friend of mine who owns a furniture store. And he tells me that he's got a line on a truckload of mattresses. I can buy this truckload of mattresses and then turn around and sell them retail to the public. I'm thinking, it sounds a little sketchy, never really done anything like that. But, you know, maybe there's something to it, right? So my wife says, well, this is kind of crazy. We, we huddled together, and a couple days later, we decided to go for it. We borrowed $8,000 and bought a truckload of mattresses. So I spend the next couple of days driving around town trying to find a place where I can put these mattresses and start selling them. I've got this vague notion that I can start a pop-up store selling mattresses, right? So I find this... Um, out of this uh, car dealership near my house that had gone out of business a year ago, and they've got a lot of space. So I go to the landlord, and I rent the space for a month. And a few days later, it's New Year's Eve, December 2009. I get together with a bunch of my friends, and we unload this truckload of mattresses, 90 mattresses. And we put them on the floor of the car dealership and start displaying them. So after we unloaded, we drink some beers, and I get to work. I listed all of the inventory on Craigslist. We love Craigslist, okay? So the mattresses are on Craigslist. Then it comes to January 2nd, 2010. My wife and I are in business. We open our mattress store. So at the beginning, business is kind of slow. But, um, and I should say, we, we didn't have a business plan. Um, and we really didn't know much about mattresses, to be quite honest with you. Um, <laughs> And then business starts to pick up a little bit. People see the fancy signs we've got in front of the store. <laughs> and um, 
Our first customers are really our neighbors, and then word starts spreading a little bit. And before you know it, my, my uh, landlord is kind enough to lend me his big pickup truck so that we can start delivering the mattresses that we're selling. A couple months later, business is starting to pick up. So we go out and we buy an, a used U-Haul truck. It costs 2800 bucks, and suddenly we're delivering mattresses three or four days a week. And it was about this time, four months into this small business, that I started to realize that I could run a business that truly reflects my personal values and the values of our community. So what's the first thing we started talking about? Delivering mattresses by bicycle. <laughs> so the mattress bike cart was designed and built by my friend Les Lasher. He's here today. That's him riding the tandem on the front. And then the next thing we decide to do is offer free delivery for people who ride their bikes to our store and purchase a mattress. Um, what we found is our customers are typically um, internet savvy shoppers. They come from all walks of life, <laughs> like this uh, Saudi Arabian couple who found us on Craigslist and uh, needed a mattress because they had moved here to learn to speak English. Um, through it all, my wife has been with me the entire time. That's her holding a baby while mom and dad shop for mattresses. Um, my wife designed and built our website at the kitchen table. It's nothing fancy, but people seem to like it, so it's working for us. Um, and a funny story about that picture, the baby there, this picture was taken a year ago. This morning when I went to open the store, that baby, who's now a year older, comes walking across the store with her parents. They've returned to the store to buy a twin mattress for their baby, that, that little girl, because the child is graduating from a crib to a twin mattress. And that's the kind of stuff we love about a community-based business, where we can take the time to get to know our customers, talk to them about their families, talk to them about the local schools, and about their sleep habits. Some other, things, <laughs> some other things we try to do is our primary manufacturers are local. We're creating jobs here in Oregon and Washington. And um, we um, employ 12 amazing people, many of whom live right here in this community who we've gotten to know through the local high school. And uh, we've even started a mattress donation program. So owning a community-based business, we found that we can take our profits and keep them right here in this community and do some really fun, valuable, exciting things. Um, in closing, it's been an amazing two years since I lost my job. I went from corporate manager, out of work corporate manager, to mattress delivery guy. My only regret is that I didn't try doing this about 20 years ago. And that Nordstrom suit and tie that I talked to you about a few minutes ago, well, a few weeks ago, I donated it to Goodwill and um, that was the best decision I could have ever made. So thank you very much.